been on solar car since freshman year. I went and saw the the car at the uh, activities fair. And I was just like, this looks like a really cool project that I could get involved with. When I came to Stanford, I was looking for some sort of engineering group. So I showed up to the first meeting. I met a bunch of the people there, and I just kind of stuck. I joined more through serendipity than anything else. Really, for the first time since some science fair projects I'd worked on in, in high school, just got my hands dirty, started building some stuff. When I was picking colleges out, I was looking for activities that would, you know, be really cool, like hands-on engineering activities. So I thought that's the real way to become like a really good engineer is to do things for real. I think it really sort of embodies the like the attitude around here, you know, Silicon Valley. The idea you just have a problem, get down to it, you build things. So the previous cycles, you know, I was I was the freshman, right? And we always joke about having the freshman go actually build the car. My position in the last cycle was a very, here's what you do, just go and do it. And now, in this position, I get to, I get to do the designs and help people try to figure out how they can build the car. Here, you've got a team of 20 people and you have to coordinate those 20 people to make sure that their efforts are actually going towards something. It's very easy with a bunch of you know, great uh, type A personalities in a room for everyone to just do their own thing and just do what they think is cool. The trick is getting them to working with people to actually work towards a solar car and not you know, accomplish negative work, which happens every once in a while. I went to the World Solar Challenge with the Sanford Solar Car Project. That's like basically the world championship for solar car. There's about 30 other teams, you know, all sorts of levels of cars, really crappy cars, really amazing cars that you would expect to see in some showroom somewhere. If you're at the beginning of the race, you're in the bug swamped northern tropical jungle of Australia and you're fighting mosquitoes while you're trying to fix that bug on the car, or like fix it. any sort of things, any number of things go wrong. But if you're on the race itself, you're racing across the outback. So you've got 2,000 miles of nothing, desert that you're driving across. It's uh, extraordinarily empty. It's kind of like the Tron grid, like vast infinite expanse that kind of goes through the horizon in each direction except sand and rocks and stuff. It can be pretty intense. Sometimes something goes wrong and you have to fix it by the side of the road and everyone's part gets pounding and you, you all run out and fix the tire or you know, reprogram the electronics really quickly to fix a bug on the race. And that's not ideal, but it's something that Stanford seems to end up doing a, a whole lot. Traditionally, I think we've finished in the top five throughout the 90s. There was a little bit of a slouch point around 2003 and 2007. 2007, we had an accident, a rollover accident. What happened was, we're driving down the Stewart Highway, which is the big highway down the middle of Australia, and uh, had a flat tire. This would be fine, because you would just end up backwards, you know, in the middle of the road, but there was a drainage ditch on the side of the road. The driver lands in the drainage ditch, and the car catches and flips over. There are about 80 solar car teams worldwide. There are about, I think, 30. 35 or so American teams. The main competition that we're aiming to be competitive with, there are a couple Dutch teams, one Japanese team that won the last challenge, and then in America, we're hoping to be competitive with Michigan. Michigan team ready to leave in one minute. They're one of the biggest solar car teams that there is. They have, depending on how you measure it, upwards of 100 members. For this car, we're expecting to spend approximately $150,000 in cash, and then approximately $400,000 in donated parts. That compares to like University of Michigan, which is like a $1.5 million operation. One of our guys, sort of maybe semi-accidentally, we're not sure, pulled in front of Michigan's caravan and cut them off. They say, we say we just passed them, right? And uh, they had to brake really hard and their solar car crunched into their lead car and they lost a day on the 2007 race. Everyone wants to beat Michigan. Everyone just likes watching them lose. The only thing that they have more of is money. 
but we think we're clever than them. We got some tricks, and they're they're worried about us. We know we we look on our blog. The only people reading our blog are people from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mostly, we get more hits from Ann Arbor than we get from anywhere else in the world. So they're they're watching us. After building a car and then driving a car across a continent, you develop a trust with someone that you, you don't really get from anything else. Like maybe you do a problem set with someone, you, you trust them to like finish their part of their project, but when one of your friends designed that suspension component or the brakes where if they fail you're gonna die, then you, there's trust there, for sure. And that's, I, I think that's the best part about this.